Should we show? Three. Show our butts. Two. One. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am very excited because I have with me Shava and Jamie who are going to be taking over an episode of Pleasure Trove. And if you can hear baby sounds in the background, <laughs> that is because my baby is here. As I am working part-time and parenting, we're going to be having some guest hosts on this channel. I am very excited to get some new people and new voices to share their sexy faves with you in episodes of Pleasure Trove. Thank you guys so much for being here. Of course, we're us. ready. Thank you yeah. for having us. Jamie and Shava both make YouTube videos. Jamie makes a lot of videos about being trans and you react to lots of TikToks and things, all kind of like LGBT Gura, plus related. Transphobia. Yeah. <laughs> Gura. Gura transphobia. Yeah. <laughs> the brand. That's the brand. Yeah. Shava makes lots of brilliant lifestyle and advice content and sometimes talks about being Asian and bisexual. That what craves. a fun time. Wow, Hannah's a true fan. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited to see what you guys have to share. Thank you so much for watching. Please be nice. If you have any other recommendations for guest hosts, also let me know. And without further ado, please take it away. Hi everyone. So we are Shava and Jamie. Hi. We're really excited to be doing this pleasure trove today. Yeah. We've come up with a little list of our favorite bits of everything, a pick and yeah. mix really. We've got some news in there, podcast bits. Movies, well, TVs. Household shows. items. Household items, yes. we've brought some. It's like show and tell, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so first things first, news. So I guess for pleasure trove, I'm not starting with the happiest of news, but it's still something that needs to be shared. And we have a happy message coming out of it. You may be aware if you're in the UK or if you're following the UK, that our politics are a whole pile of crap right Hot now. Mess. I'm not going to go into prime ministerial candidates, but it does look that now and for the foreseeable future, we don't have some great things happening in terms of trans rights in Yay. particular. Trans rights seem to be like a bit of a pawn. It was something that the candidates seemed to use to be like one up each other. We're more transphobic than the other person. Vote yeah. for us. Um, so I'm sorry that the future seems bleak, but you're really not looking into it. It's okay. <laughs> like if you need to protect your mental health by not looking into certain current affairs, that's fine. I know roughly what's going on, but I'm not looking at the details because I can't do anything about it. You don't have to doom scroll. You don't have to get all down and dirty in the real down and dirty and just know that you are valid. You are amazing. We love you, even though we're going through a rocky patch right now. But leading on to some super happy news. There's news about IVF for all that's just happened very recently. Before, cis women couples and trans and non-binary couples would have to prove their infertility by paying privately for sessions of IUI, which could, how much did it cost up to for some people? Up to about £25,000 before you could be eligible yeah. to partake in pregnancy efforts on the NHS. Whereas cisgender heterosexual couples were able to prove their infertility by two years of trying, which is free. We can try as, as hard <laughs> as we like, you know, but somehow it's just not it's happening. Just not happening. <laughs> but now they're opening up the access to IVF through the NHS for all types of couples. Yes. So whoever you are, however you identify, whatever relationship you're in, you can now qualify for IUI and IVF on the NHS. And they're also making the postcode lottery not so much of a thing and increasing transparency. So yay, babies all around. I'm very excited. <laughs> also a little bit broody. A little bit. <laughs> Next up, events. So as lockdowns with COVID are lifting, lifted, lifted, even though COVID is not over, there's no longer the same amount of lockdowns. Prides are something that's happening again this year for the yeah. first time since 2019. We went to our first Prides this year for the first time since 2019, and yeah. it was such a good feeling. Overwhelming, yeah. not gonna lie. Yeah. Just seeing crowds so many after people. COVID were, yeah. There's this many wild. people in the world, <laughs> yeah. London Pride celebrating its 50th year anniversary. Mm -hmm. It was great, such a good vibe. It was amazing. And London Trans Pride and Brighton Trans Pride both happening this year with 30,000 and 20,000 attendees respectively, which I think is the biggest ever. We went to Trans Pride in 2019, 2019. and seeing the crowds this yeah. year, the protests were so different. So much bigger. So don't worry, don't listen to the toughs out there. There are huge levels of support. Absolutely. By the time you're watching this video, we'll also still be in the middle of Pride mm -hmm. season, because pr what is Pride season? Pride is all year round. <laughs> Summer, because <laughs> that's the nicest time to walk outside. Days. <laughs> Should we move on to our next section? Yes. 
podcasts. I'm really excited to share a podcast that I didn't know existed, Bad Shaba, until I was asked to be on it. So this isn't self-promo. I'm just so happy that I found but it. But go listen to Shaba's episode. No, no, <laughs> just go listen to the podcast. It's called Brown Girls Do It Too. It's a BBC podcast. It lifts my soul. It's about brown girls liberating themselves from the stigma around not just sex, but talking about sex and being able to do anything more than just traditional missionary positions. I was on to talk about kink and BDSM. It was mm -hmm. good fun, as are the rest of the episodes. So I'd really love to give that little podcast a little shout out and a mention. And a podcast I want to give a shout out to is Should I Delete That? Good. It's all about those things that you're not sure if you should share and just like opening up taboo topics, talking about things that are maybe a bit more stigmatized. <laughs> boundaries, what are boundaries? Boundaries. And we went on and we spoke about our relationship and my transness and your family acceptance or lack thereof at the beginning of our relationship. And, and turfs and sports and all things. And I just think it's great to have these spaces where all different topics can be discussed without judgment, without stigma or shame. Absolutely. And just opening up those conversations. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little cringe looking into our relationship background and our, our very terrible teen moments. But away from our episodes as well, there's a whole bunch um, of wonderful guests who talk about all things relationships, sex, mm -hmm. dating, and many other things too. Go check it out. <laughs> Now we're gonna move on to TV. So this might be somewhat old news, I get it. We're at the end of Pride season now, but it deserves a shout out I nonetheless. I wasn't a Pride season. Yeah. It's all year. <laughs> Heartstopper, oh my goodness. If you haven't seen or heard of Heartstopper, you should absolutely get yourself immersed. It started Alice Oseman with an incredible graphic novel mm -hmm. series. There's actually a new one coming there out of volume five, which I'm so excited about. And the TV series has just hit Netflix. It's a wonderful celebration of all things relationships. And there's mm -hmm. so much diversity involved from race to size to ability coming up. Spoiler, if you've only watched the TV series and you've not seen the graphic novels, but go, 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 look at, look at everything. It's fantastic. And it's also been confirmed for new seasons coming up mm -hmm. on Netflix. So watch this space. I cannot wait, especially because it's something that shows LGBT plus storylines in a positive light, yeah. which I think we need. We don't get enough of that, right? But also for young people, because it's for a young audience and it just feels like that's something that is going to be such a positive impact. Like if I'd had that when I was 15. Oh, where was it? Yes. The word exactly. high never sounded more romantic. Oh, that's not going to make sense if people haven't watched it. Well, get on with it. Yeah. Get a wiggle on. <laughs> <laughs> and the TV show that I wanted to mention is Umbrella Academy. Although not anything LGBT plus related, that's not what the show is about. Elliot Page plays a main character in the show and starts his transition between seasons and what was really great is this show incorporated this really wonderfully into the storyline so just some really like relatable moments as a trans person watching that of like oh my gosh like the haircut moment and like other little bits you have to go check Jamie it out. He was watching scenes and he was like it's happening. Yeah I was like watching it I was like how are they going to introduce this and I was like oh that's really cool because it's subtle enough that just generally watching it you're not really sure what's going on but if you know you know and it's like oh it's coming. So little LGBT plus Easter egg. Yes. I love that. Yes. And then the coming out scenes are just very heartwarming because they all have superpowers. I feel like it wouldn't be believable if they couldn't get their head around a sibling being trans. <laughs> like that. They can bend the time and sending, space and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then there's a really cute moment between Elliot's character Victor and one of his siblings, Luther, about throwing a little party, making him feel loved after he's coming out. It's really sweet to see a storyline where the show isn't about transness and people being trans, but they do it in this really positive, like non-traumatic way. And also in this really like nonchalant way, mm. right? It was like, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, nice Death. haircut. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You know, the stuff's happening. Now let's save the thing. world. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I feel like we need to give a little shout out to Netflix here, who retrospectively changed Elliot Page's credits too, which um, was a beautiful thing to see. We don't want to see any dead naming. Okay, so our final section is stuff. This feels like a bit of a show and tell moment because we've brought some things from our own personal pleasure trove. Mm -hmm. It's not like the biggest selection here, but you know, next time you come over, we'll, we'll show you all our secrets. For now, should we show three? Show our butts. Two, one, couple of it was as big as a mine. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> we have vases and a mugs. Mug. I have to say it's wonderful, not the easiest to drink out of. We love our butts so much and I love the fact <laughs> That's just a great sentence. I just love the fact that we are seeing so much diversity in just general things. Yeah. I've seen vases with boobs as well. And the most amazing thing is that they're so different. There are camel toes on some. Mm -hmm. I love this. Different size boobs on different others. Different skin colors. Big hips, small hips, yeah. everything in between. Okay, moving on to item number two. You ready? Ah. 
the incredibly wrinkled boob pillowcase, which does go with the whole duvet set. We don't literally just have a pillowcase. Could but you imagine? This seemed more convenient to bring. I love this bedding so much. There's actually ones with badges all over them too. Really? Urban Outfitters. Go to. And we a have a peaches one as well, which you know, butts. Looks like butts. Because we like butts. We do. What I really love about this pillowcase in particular, this whole bedding set, is the boobs are not symmetrical. This is wonderful. This is a representation of my boobs. I know. I remember when we first got them, you were looking. It's like, oh yeah, those are mine. I feel so seen. I call my boobs bubble and squeak because one is slightly larger than the other, and I feel like there are some definite bubble and squeak representations on here. I feel like we're holding up a flag. <laughs> can this be our flag? Oh, it's not very representative. Yeah, not just boobs. It can be a part of a crest. Okay. That's your homework. We're going to create a little family crest. Okay. Cats, boobs, pizza. And finally, our final item. Ready? We actually picked this up from Transpride. We did, yes. It's upside down. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> Sorry. This is from a trans artist called Leo Mateus, and you can get this in prints, candles, pendants, Earrings, earrings, stickers, whatever you want. And I just think seeing trans bodies represented in art and really lovely art feels very special. Yeah. So we had to get one. What I love is that it's so subtle. People seeing this now may not quite understand. Do you want to explain how this is a trans body? This is a person who has had top surgery but was assigned female at birth. So we got the little scars. I love mm -hmm. it. It's so tastefully done. It's yeah. beautiful. I really do want the candles, but they keep being sold out. I know. So they're too popular. <laughs> and I want to get them as the set. We shouldn't have given the shout out because now we're never going to get a candle. I know, damn it. <laughs> I feel like even when we do win, when we do get mm -hmm. a set, I'm going to be too scared to burn them because they're just no, so No, we're beautiful. not burning them. Right? Like never. we just have to... Or we buy three and we burn one. You always need a backup. Okay. A pair and spare. That's uh, like underpants. <laughs> I don't think anyone has ever used that for candles before, but sure. Yeah. But imagine it would be kind of sexy to have like little drips. Yeah, but then it would get to the point where it was just a bit morbid. <laughs> <laughs> imagine when you get down to here, just like, oh no. Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll leave them be. <laughs> Lovely as art. Love Love, love the representation. I think mm -hmm. it's so important. We'd love to see more of this. So there you go. That's everything. Thank you very much for exploring our pleasure trove with us. A huge thank you to the wonderful Hannah, who is very busy parenting right now. A little reminder, please make sure to pop other guests that you'd like to see down below. Also in the description box, we'll leave some links to our little wonderful pleasure trove of items mm -hmm. where you can get Leo's art, listen to the podcast yeah. and such. And please feel free to help us boost Hannah's algorithm. Drop a little comment downstairs. <laughs> give this video a thumbs up and sub if you haven't already because Hannah's great. Yeah, and if you want to check out Shaba's channel, and maybe mine, <laughs> but I'd more recommend Shaba's, <laughs> then the links are down there as well. He's pretty awesome too. Go click. Click everywhere. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. See you soon. Bye. Bye.